Hi guys, I've gotten a few questions recently about ionic bonding, so I wanted to make a short video going through a few more practice problems together. Just as with anything new, it takes time and practice to really feel confident with that new material. So be patient with yourself and remember that practice really will make perfect. Let's take a look at an example that we didn't get to in class today. This example is with aluminum, Al, and oxygen, O. Let's start by taking a look at aluminum. We're gonna focus in on aluminum. Now, if you notice for aluminum, aluminum has one, two, three valence electrons. We're gonna ask ourselves, what would make aluminum happy and full? And there are kind of two options here. Because it has three valence electrons and it wants to be happy and full at eight valence electrons, it could either receive five electrons, then we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So receiving five electrons could make aluminum happy and full. Or aluminum could get rid of these three valence electrons, drop down an energy level, and be happy and full in energy level two here. So these are our two options to make aluminum happy and full, receiving five electrons or donating three electrons. We're gonna go with the easier option. It would take less work to just donate three than it would to receive five. Okay, so aluminum really wants to donate three electrons. Let's shift our focus to oxygen. Take a look at oxygen's atom. We have one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons for oxygen. Now the question we ask ourselves is what would make oxygen happy and full? It has six valence electrons now, and it wants to be happy and full at eight. So we could either receive two electrons, then we would have the six that are already there, plus the two we're receiving, we would be happy and full at eight. Or oxygen could donate its six valence electrons, get rid of them drop down an energy level to be happy and full there. Now, of course, it's gonna go with the easier option. Receiving two electrons just takes less work than donating six. Okay, so at this point, we have aluminum, which wants to donate three electrons, and we have oxygen, which wants to receive two. Now, this isn't a perfect match. Electrons have to come from somewhere, they have to go somewhere, they can't just be floating around. So how are we going to make this work? We may need to play with the number of aluminum atoms we have, or the number of oxygen atoms we have. In fact, as you play with this, you'll see that if you have two aluminum atoms, and if you have three oxygen atoms. This means that aluminum atoms want to donate three and donate three. So we have six total electrons being donated. Oxygen wants to receive two and receive two and receive two. We have six places that are happy to receive electrons. Now everything matches up and we can ionically bond. Take a look at aluminum. I'm getting rid of its three valence electrons. So it drops down an energy state and is happy and full. Those valence electrons are received by oxygen. This top oxygen receives two valence electrons. Now it is happy and full at eight electrons too. And in the end, everyone here is happy and full. 
Now, because aluminum has donated electrons, it has given away its negative electrons. That means that the total charge is now positive. We call these aluminum ions cations. Oxygen, though, received two electrons. It used to be balance of protons and electrons, but now it has taken on two more negative electrons. So it now has a negative total charge. We call negative total charges anions. So last but not least, we need to name aluminum and oxygen being bonded together to form this molecule. How do we come up with the name for the molecule made of aluminum and oxygen? We call it aluminum oxide. Notice the ending I-D-E. We've heard this ending several times now. We heard it in our warm up from today. Sodium chloride, potassium sulfide, and now aluminum oxide. And we can write a formula for this molecule. We would write Al2O3. This tells us that Al, aluminum, we had two aluminum atoms. And O, oxygen, we had three oxygen atoms. So this made aluminum oxide, Al2O3. So at this point, I wanna switch over to your ionic bonding practice worksheet. Remember, the best way to feel confident with ionic bonding is to put in time and practice. Let's do a few practice problems together in case you're stuck. Let's take a look at question number one. And I'm gonna focus on this first row, calcium. Notice that calcium has a symbol of Ca. So I'm gonna to go to my periodic table and find calcium right here. Ca. I'm noticing that calcium has an atomic number of 20, meaning that calcium, all calcium atoms, will always have 20 protons. So the total number of electrons in a neutral atom would also be the number of protons, 20. After all, if you have 20 protons and 20 electrons, you would get a neutral charge. Next up, we have the number of valence electrons. I'm going to go back to my periodic table. And I'm noticing that calcium is in group number two. From a couple of classes ago, we saw a pattern that the group number tells you the number of valence electrons. So although calcium has 20 electrons in total, it only has two electrons in the outermost energy level. It has two valence electrons. That's how we came up with this number. So now we're starting to think about bonding. We have this calcium atom. It has two valence electrons, and it just wants to be happy and full in its outermost energy level. How can we get our calcium atom happy and full? Well, it could lose two electrons, or technically it could gain six electrons. Either way, it would be happy and full at a total of eight electrons in its outermost energy level. The reason why we didn't list gain six electrons is because it would be so much more work than just losing two. And nature always goes with the easiest route. Now let's think about that. Calcium used to have 20 electrons. It now has lost two electrons. It lost 
two negatives, meaning that we now have a cation, a positive total charge ion. Look at how we write that. Ca stands for calcium. Two plus. That tells me that I now have two more protons than electrons. That would make sense because I just lost two electrons. I'll leave the remainder of question number one, this table, for you to practice. Let's talk through question number two. Really important to read the directions here. For the following elements, first, you're going to draw a Bohr diagram. That's these guys that have the little rings, those energy levels, and the electrons in each. Indicate how an ionic bond would form using arrows to show the movement. Indicate the correct number of atoms. You might need to add more. And then write the resulting molecule using subscripts. Okay, let's tackle this together. Our first example involves aluminum and oxygen. I'm going to start by drawing my Bohr models. So I'm going to take a look at aluminum in the periodic table. Aluminum in the periodic table has an atomic number of 13. That means that it has 13 protons. In a neutral aluminum atom, that also means it would have 13 electrons. I'm also noticing that aluminum is in group 13, or main group 3, which is reminding me that I should get three valence electrons for anything in this group. Okay, let's draw our Bohr model. So for aluminum, we had 13 valence electrons. The first shell gets two. The next shell can hold up to eight, so we're at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total electrons. Remember, aluminum has 13. 11, 12, 13. This is my model for aluminum. 13 total electrons with three valence electrons. I'm going to draw a Bohr model for oxygen as well. Back on the periodic table, I found oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight, meaning it has eight protons. In a neutral oxygen atom, that means it would also have eight electrons. And I'm noticing that oxygen is in group 16 or main group 6, meaning that I would expect oxygen to have six valence electrons. Okay, let's draw oxygen. Oxygen again has eight total electrons and six of those are valence electrons. Hey, there's my Bohr model for oxygen. Now I'm going to start thinking about bonding. I'm going to ask myself, what would need to happen for aluminum to be happy and full and for oxygen to be happy and full? Well, for aluminum, I'm seeing that aluminum has one, two, three valence electrons. So it could either donate it's three valence electrons drop down an energy level and be nice and happy and full. Or it could receive five electrons in order to complete that third energy level. Now, it would be much easier to donate three 
then receive five. Let's now take a look at oxygen. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. So for oxygen to be happy and full, it could either receive two electrons, so that it has a total of eight electrons in its outermost shell, or it could donate those six electrons and drop down an energy level to be full. Now receiving two electrons would be much easier than donating six. Okay, so we have aluminum that wants to donate three electrons and oxygen that only wants to receive two. Now this isn't a perfect match yet. So we're gonna need to play around with the number of atoms that we're introducing here. What if I were to have two aluminum atoms instead of just one? Something like this. Now I have the top aluminum wanting to donate three electrons and the bottom one wanting to donate three electrons. I have six electrons up for grabs. So how many oxygens would I need? That's right, I would need three oxygen atoms. The first one wants to receive two, the second one wants to receive two, and the third one wants to receive two. That makes for a total of six electrons wanting to be received. Now we have a great match. Six electrons donated from our aluminum and six electrons received from our oxygen. I'm gonna draw in some arrows so we can see that transfer of electrons. As a double check, we can look at our aluminum and we can see that once we got rid of those electrons, it drops down an energy level and its outermost energy level, the second level, is happy and full. For oxygen, now that it's gained those electrons, it's received them, it is at eight valence electrons, it is also happy and full. In the end, everyone is happy and full. Now, these arrows can make it a little bit confusing. So instead, I'm gonna erase those arrows. And instead of those arrows, I'm gonna simply look at the result. Once aluminum donates those three, it's gonna be left with this. And those three electrons that it donates go here, here, and here. Same thing with my bottom aluminum. It's gonna donate its three electrons, so it drops down an energy level. Those three electrons have gone here, here, and here. This is a much easier to read representation. You can really see that everyone's happy and full. Now our final part is to name this new molecule. We combined aluminum and oxygen. So the name of the molecule that results is aluminum oxide. Notice that ending of I-D-E. We can even write the molecular formula as Al2, because I have two aluminums, O3, because I have three oxygens. Through ionic bonding, we have created aluminum oxide, also known as Al2O3. And that is what you see in question number two of your document. Here we've included the process, just so you can see the thinking, as well as the result. And we would expect that you would upload a picture something like this and then write the molecular formula. And finally, question number three in this document is all about naming. 
I'd like to zoom into this example for calcium chloride. So we are given the molecule's name, calcium chloride. The first thing I'm going to do is fill in the elements. This must have been calcium or Ca meeting chlorine atoms or Cl. If you don't have all the element symbols memorized, that is okay. You can always look at the periodic table. Calcium and chlorine have formed calcium chloride. Again, we're seeing that I-D-E ending for the molecule name. Now we need to write the molecular formula. I know that's going to be C-A-C-L but I'm not quite sure about the subscripts yet. I'm not quite sure how many calcium atoms I need and how many chlorine atoms I need. Let's head to the periodic table and gather some more information about calcium and chlorine. Here's calcium. A neutral calcium atom would have 20 electrons. And I'm noticing calcium falls into group two, which means it would have two valence electrons. Chlorine over here has an atomic number of 17, meaning a neutral chlorine atom would have 17 electrons. And it falls into group 17, also known as main group seven, meaning it would have seven valence electrons. Bringing that information back, I've recorded that calcium has two valence electrons and chlorine has seven valence electrons. That means in order to be happy and full, calcium could either donate two electrons or it could receive six electrons, but that would take much more work. Chlorine, which has seven valence electrons, it could receive one electron. It could also donate seven electrons to be happy and full, but that's a lot more work. So if calcium is donating two and chlorine is receiving one, that means that I'm gonna need one calcium atom and two chlorine atoms. That way, the two electrons that calcium's donating, one will go to this chlorine and the other will go to this chlorine so that each chlorine receives one, but with two chlorines, that's a total of two electrons received. If it's helpful for you to draw out the full Bohr diagram, you're welcome to do that too. So recording that over here, I have one calcium atom. I have two chlorine atoms. But remember that we don't even write subscripts for one, we just leave it blank. So the molecular formula here would simply be CaCl2, calcium chloride. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, this takes time and practice in order to really get a hang of ionic bonding. That's why we've included these additional optional extra practice problems. You do not have to do them, but you really may want to do them if you're not feeling confident yet. The more practice you put in, the better you will get at this, just like anything.